After experiencing several delightful nights at the lovely Old Faithful Inn, we bid a fond farewell to this majestic structure and embarked on one final exploration of Yellowstone National Park. Our ambitions for the day include visiting the stunning Grand Prismatic Spring, encountering more wildlife as we venture through Lamar Valley, and discovering parts of Yellowstone that have been previously inaccessible due to snow. We got to the Grand Prismatic Spring at about 7 a.m., hoping to beat the crowds. Sadly, even on this clear blue sky morning, the air was freezing and the rising fog clouded our view. But that didn't stop us from walking around the boardwalk and getting close to each of the springs. We decided against the longer hike uphill for the overhead view because the fog would have blocked the stunning colours of the spring anyway. It was a letdown since we were excited to see the prasminic refractions, but hey, that's nature for you. It's still incredible to be here and witness it in person. There is something refreshing about being at the springs early in the morning. It's nice that it's not as crowded and the entire atmosphere encourages contemplation and awe. We're on our way to the Lamar Valley today to have a look and see if we can finally see more animals than we have seen. One thing that if you're coming to Yellowstone to be aware of is that it's all about timing. So animals are not just everywhere waiting to be seen. If you're driving along, you might see one. If you see people stopped, you might realize that, okay, there might be an animal around. We're in the Lamar Valley, which is well known for lots of wildlife here in Yellowstone. We've seen bison around, there's some just on the back hill here. We're still looking for elk, we're still looking for a good shot of a bear. As we pulled up there was a local tour person here and we asked them where, uh, where we might be able to see some of those animals. And they said that the bears and elk are not so active at this time of day. The elk can be usually higher up in the, just higher up. On the wall. And the wolves also not active around this time of day. So if you really want to see wolves and bears, it is a early in the morning trip or a late in the afternoon. As we ventured further into the Lamar Valley, we came across a crowd of cars and people along the roadside. And there we spotted a large group of bison with their young resting on the field right next to the road. It was fascinating to see the dugouts on the ground where they had been rolling and sleeping. Many calves were lying flat out asleep while others were feeding from their mothers. This was a really cool sight and we spent some time here while Heather filmed all these shots with her 500mm lens.
we eventually tore ourselves away and headed further into the Lamar Valley as the road winds along beside the Lamar River. We reached a vantage point where ground squirrels were nearby and seemed unfazed by our presence. And in the distance, we saw a large herd of bison in the valley below. Being so far from the road, the bison looked like dots on the plains. It was amazing to see the vast open space filled with so many bison. So going past the bison we were looking at earlier, expect crowds. They reckon there's over 200 bison, probably around 200 people. We've had to backtrack uh, back to Mammoth Hot Springs because the road we we're going to take is still closed because of the snow. So while in Mammoth, uh, which is about all things big, we got a king size Kit Kat. Look at the size of that compared to my hand. <laughs> Huge mammoth. It comes with eight fingers, not four. <laughs> Family size. We had to backtrack and missed a portion of the top loop of Yellowstone. However, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. During our backtrack, we encountered another animal jam on the road and spotted not just one, but four grizzly bears. A mother and her three older cubs were only about a hundred metres from the road. Unfortunately, we couldn't find a parking space and Heather had left some of her gear in the car. But despite that, she managed to film the bears on her phone and capture some great photos with her 500mm lens. This was an incredibly exciting experience. After an exciting encounter with the bears, we headed to the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone as planned. This narrow and steep canyon, carved out by the Yellowstone River, was truly impressive. We stopped to explore Artist Point and followed the trail, taking in the breathtaking views along the way. Before heading east, we stopped at one more geyser. The mud volcano geyser is, I think, the smelliest geyser we visited. It does smell like dozens of rotten eggs that have been dropped. However, it was still a really cool place and was really popular with visitors.
ready to start heading east along the North Fork Road. The east entrance to Yellowstone is still 42 kilometres from the Yellowstone Lake Junction. So there was still plenty of Yellowstone scenery to see before we moved on to the road to Cody. As we travelled, I reflected on how amazing it was to be here. We didn't get to see everything, and not everything went according to plan. That's the way holidays go. Nature isn't governed by our plans, and this road trip is certainly reminding us of that. Even though we missed out on some things, we know we are lucky as Australians to have the opportunity to come here and witness these incredible places with our own eyes. So don't be discouraged by people who try to tell you what you should do or who criticise you for not having enough time or not seeing what they think you should see. You just be you, come with the time you have and do your best to see whatever you can. You won't regret it. It's a privilege to have the freedom to travel. I'm aware of the bonds that were created today When you told me that sure there's a way so still and my pain has gone away the air is much cleaner after the rain follow my love the in spring we certainly weren't finished with Yellowstone just yet though so hold on to your seats we were not expecting the wonderful sights we were about to see just when we thought we had seen some of the best snow and ice, the climb over the mountains near Avalanche Peak gave us a stunning view of the mountains and of the high mountain lakes still frozen and surrounded by deep snow. I'm a wanderer of the soul Before the end I plan to be whole But I know I'll lose myself along the way And before we're done we finally saw some long horned sheep jumping over the guardrail and crossing right across our path. The drive from Yellowstone to Cody is one of the most scenic routes in Wyoming. Winding through the ranges and canyons, you'll find yourself in awe at every turn. The beautiful scenery seems to go on and on. It takes about an hour and 45 minutes to drive straight from the Lake Junction to Cody, plus stops. But the drive is just as intriguing as Yellowstone itself in its own way. This is a must-see if you are visiting Yellowstone. Our final destination today is Applejack Ranch, located just outside Cody. We will pick up here in our next episode and explore some highlights of our visit to Cody. Until next time, stay tuned and look after your mates.